Okay, this is the continuation of test uh, one. And if you look carefully and you listen to the sound, you'll notice that the magnet is just kind of like bouncing and it's not really um, doing anything in combination or in synchronicity with that pulse. And if we look at our LEDs, they're barely lit and we have 1.83 volts uh, going across them right now. Now we're at the frequency of just uh, above two uh, hertz. And what I'll do now is I'll just set it to two hertz and you'll see the difference. Now it's on two hertz. Look at the voltage rising. Again, there's another resonance point at two hertz. Okay, look at our LEDs, they're lit. So right now, if you look at the magnet, the magnet is in synchronicity with that pulse. It's being shot up to the highest point. Okay, and that's what the kind of thing you want to coordinate and get, and that's when you get a better output. Now we're at over 1.91 volts, okay? And it's maintaining that with a load of those LEDs because of our capacitor bank, you know, being large and capable of keeping an average voltage, okay? And if you think about it, well, for utilizing about 13 milliamps or 12 milliamps before well we're going to be utilizing obviously half of that because we were close to four hertz before that okay so we're going to be around six milliamps seven milliamps so with seven milliamps now we're actually in a more efficient position here and that's the kind of thing that you know you want to be looking at and searching for is the ideal resonating frequencies. Okay, here we are again at the resonating point that's just below 4 hertz. And as you see, the magnet is in synchronicity with the pulse. And uh, what I've done is I've taken the, uh, resist uh, the uh, diodes out, uh, the LEDs, and replaced it with a 276 ohm resistor to give us a similar kind of load and with that resistor there I have uh, 2.79 volts across it or 2.78 volts uh, somewhere around that point there and I'm figuring about uh, at 12.91 volts at about 12 uh, milliamps that it's utilizing on average. So let's look at the data. So there is the uh, data for the uh, collected uh, flyback and energy collected on that uh, 276 ohm load. 0 0.03 about uh, watts there. And here is the power consumed 0 0.15 watts at uh, our 12.91 volts at 12 uh, milliamps and um, that's the data at that frequency and here is the uh, pulse at 2 hertz and again another resonant point and the same resistor and we have a total of 1.66 or 67 volts across the resistor at that frequency being maintained and if we look at the meters we're again at 12.92 maybe and uh, we have obviously some very low areas I would say probably an average of six uh, milliamps is about uh, good for that there so there is our score for the uh, 2 hertz uh, frequency. And here is the uh, power consumed.
here is another resonating point that uh, is happening. But I have to use this stack of half inch needle magnets to uh, push against. So, uh, 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 same poles, okay, pushing against the magnet. And if you look at the magnet now, it's really moving up and down. I haven't changed nothing of the setting except for frequency. So there's another resonating point. And if we look at our voltage, we now have 2.70, well, it was up to 2.73 uh, volts. Okay, there it is. I have to get the pressure just right uh, between there. So we have 2.73 volts now on our 276 ohm load. And if again, it's the next frequency up, which is just a little uh, around 8 hertz. And that's what we're drawing there, about 22 uh, milliamps at 12.86. So let's do the math. Okay, so here's the score for the uh, 8 hertz uh, resonating point. Uh, we got uh, 2.73 volts across our load. And that gives us a, a score of about uh, 0 0.03 watts. And here is the power consumed at 12.86 volts, 22 milliamps, gives us uh, 0.28 uh, watts in. So as you can see, just by uh, utilizing this uh, stack of uh, half-inch new magnets here, and pushing, uh, which is in a repel uh, orientation against the magnet down there to keep it from uh, coming up. It's interesting. I mean, there's another magnet that's repelling it from going bottoming. This one's keeping the magnet. And, and with that correct pressure between the two, then the magnet is starting to work harder it's you know bouncing up more than it would if that pressure wasn't there so this is a very interesting uh, kind of a th activity happening and I think this is the kind of stuff that needs to be studied uh, you know we're only operating at 8 Hertz here imagine what happens at 5,000 Hertz you know 2,000 Hertz you could have very stiff uh, springs or whatever it's when the resonance happens that there's a certain kind of activity that that magnet can now do and give flux back into the coil. Sure, you're going to have to put electricity into it, but there must be a point or a certain frequency when it starts to resonate all that it might give back a lot of energy as well. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, that I want to continue to study. There's the uh, magnet there. When I push, I had that magnet uh, down to about there and basically it's bottoming it's bottoming out basically the other magnet there and it was capable of pushing against that strong uh, flux you know working against two fluxes and uh, giving out a good uh, you know a good output on that load here is something very interesting I've taken the magnet out okay I'm sending the same frequency that I was sending, just around 4 hertz, and this same load of 276 ohm is now against it. It's been working for a while, and that's the maximum voltage I can collect of the flyback. Okay, 0.38 volts against that load. And look at the power. The power is nearly double of input power going to the coil. And I'm collecting only that poor flyback. All right, that's all I can collect of flyback. I've changed nothing. Adding the magnet, the whole thing changes around. The voltage starts shooting up, okay, against our load. And we're using less power. Isn't that incredible? And we have work happening here. That magnet is pushing up and down. That weight. The weight of the magnet itself. Now that's incredible. Look at the voltage. Keeps climbing. 
It'll climb all the way up to 2.73 or whatever it was. Isn't that interesting? Thanks for watching.